Hi, and welcome to another episode of Inside Oakland County. I'm your host, Oakland County Commissioner John Scott. Joining us today is Lori Van Pelt, the Director of Management and Budget for Oakland County. But first, let's take a look at the Oakland County Sheriff's Department's Crime Lab. Dorothy, we're here at the Crime Lab. It's a new facility at Oakland County Sheriff's Department. Tell us a little bit about the facility and just what we have going here. Sure. Well, we um, actually took over this space from uh, Patrol Services, and uh, we started construction in um, 2014, and we actually completed the construction in July of 2014. So since July of 2014, we've been in our space with all of the instruments uh, that we need in order to perform the DNA and biology testing. And uh, we've been working on the whole validation process, which is quite a lengthy process in order to make sure that everything is working correctly. Okay. And what do we plan on doing here? I know we, we have DNA and there's a reason for it, but uh, to do our own in, in the county. But uh, tell me, go through some of the processes of uh, you get the evidence, what's going to happen, how does it get uh, put through and, and to where you actually do the DNA testing and the biology testing? Sure. Well, what happens is we get the evidence from the submitting agencies. Uh, in our case, it's going to be the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. And we actually open up all of the evidence and we look at it for the presence of any sort of biological fluid or areas that may have um, DNA deposited on it, such as uh, the collar of somebody's shirt or the cuffs of somebody's uh, sweatshirt, for example, are really good sources for DNA. So what we're doing is we're screening the evidence to see if we have any sort of blood or semen saliva present that are actually bodily fluids, mm -hmm. or if there's an area that we can swab that we can actually get the skin cells that also will contain the DNA. Uh, from that point on, we take cuttings of those um, different pieces of evidence, and we carry those on for the DNA process. Uh, and the whole point is to um, uh, look at it for a DNA profile and hopefully get a full profile in order to match it back to uh, any sort of a suspect. So, so you're getting stuff from the Sheriff's Department. What about our other community policing agencies? Will they be submitting to you also or is that yet to be determined? That is yet to be determined. That's what I thought. It's, it's, it's quite a process though. It's, it's quite a facility here. Uh, let's do a little bit of your background and how the heck did you get into this business here? And, uh, uh, we've talked earlier, you talked something about, well, what you see on TV and what you smell are two different things. Tell us just a, <laughs> a, a little bit about your background and how you actually ended up being coming into the forensics portion of the of police officer, police sure. agencies. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for 18 years. I've been in forensic science for 18 years. Uh, I worked for the Detroit Police Department for about three years, and I've worked for the Michigan State Police Crime Laboratories for about 15 years. Uh, so I've I've seen a lot, um, but I've always wanted to do forensics um, from the time that I went into uh, college. I went to Wayne State University, and I actually got my bachelor's degree in medical technology, which is performing hospital laboratory work. And the reason I did that was because doing laboratory work, um, it kind of branches off into forensics. Um, and that was one of, the, one of the many ways in order to get into forensics 20 mm -hmm. years ago. Um, I then went on because I thought, well, I really like the lab work, I like doing the hospital lab work, but I'd like to get a little bit more um, focus, perhaps, on forensics. So I actually went back and I got my master's from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Uh, I got my master's in forensic science from there. Okay. Well, good. So that gets you into this thing. So back to the lab a little bit here. Okay, so now you've taken your cuttings, you've done your testing, it's gone through there, and now you've got DNA. What happens next? Because you've got the data, now what, what do you do? Where does it go from there? Well, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, compare it to any known samples that were submitted with the case, uh, in the, for example, like the victim or the suspect, to see if we have a match there. Um, then in addition, we will be getting the CODIS database, which stands for the um, Combined DNA Index System, which is run by the FBI. 
Uh, and what we will do at our level, the called the local level, is we will be putting in any evidentiary samples, um, put them into the database. The database then is going to be uploaded to the state level. Up in Lansing with the Michigan State Police, they actually run all known samples from um, convicted offenders. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, so they put those in the database. When we upload our samples, they are then compared to the known samples that are already up in Lansing to see if perhaps you know our suspect is already in the database and we can um, identify them that way. Uh, in addition, the Michigan State Police also has three DNA laboratories in Northville, Lansing, and Grand Rapids. They also are putting in their unknown evidentiary samples into this database, and our samples are also going to be compared across to those as well to see if perhaps we have a case-to-case -case hit and we can give some leads to the detectives that way. Right, because crime does not have a border. It, it does not. It can go all over, even though we're doing Oakland County information. It could be something someplace else. That's good to, to do that. All right, for all of our CSI fans, you know, the folks that watch it on TV, and boy, they solve crimes really quick. What are we really looking at in a process? You start by the, the cuttings, like you said, and the testing, and then going through the CODIS. What, it, you just don't get, bada boom, that quick a, a, a thing on the DNA, do you? No, unfortunately, we don't. Uh, even just, you know, the screening process itself of the evidence takes some time. Um, so depending on how many items of evidence you have, that's going to take up part of your process as well. Mm -hmm. Once we um, actually take the cutting, it goes across for the DNA process. We have to extract the DNA. We then have to quantitate it to find out how much we have because in all of these scientific uh, procedures, you have specific amounts that are optimal in order to get a DNA profile. Um, so you don't want to overwhelm your system and come out with basically junk, you know, nothing, okay. something that you can't do anything with. So we go from extraction, quantitation, to find out how much DNA we have. And then what we do is we take that DNA and we run it through what's called an amplification process. And basically what we're doing is we're putting it on an instrument called a thermocycler, which is um, essentially a programmable heating and cooling block. And what that does with the DNA as well as all of the different chemicals that we're adding, it actually makes multiple copies of the DNA. And what that does is it brings it up to a level that we can visualize, and it um, actually puts a fluorescent tag on the DNA so it can be visualized on the instrument, which is the next step, putting it on the capillary electrophoresis uh, for um, electrophoresis to, find the, to see the fluores fluorescent tags. Okay, and then so timing-wise, <clears throat> you're looking at not uh, an hour show, you're looking at days in some cases. Weeks. Weeks. Yes. Weeks before it finally comes back. Right. And, and, you know, the thing to keep in mind is that we don't work on just one case at a time. True. That's not efficient. Uh, screening, everything is done single, uh, one mm -hmm. at a time. However, when you get to the DNA process, everything is batched. Uh, so you have to make sure, too, that you have enough samples to carry through the process. Um, you know, you have to wait for that last case to get in to, right. to actually go through the process. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned the state police had three labs, and now we have ours. Are we the only really local unit of the government that has gone this route? Yes, well, in Michigan. Great. And and I know there's reasons for it. As <laughs> state, you worked at the state. It's a pretty good backlog, isn't it? You know, it is, and, you know, there are... Um, leaps and bounds going all the time to try to get that under control and mm -hmm. you know everybody is trying to get the newer technology in to streamline uh, the system. Uh, it's just usually um, what's coming in is coming in faster than what's able to go out right. but everybody is yeah of course working on trying to get the backlog yeah. down. Yeah considering you only have three locations and you got a whole state to deal with that, that I can see the backlog coming in unless they really devoted a serious amount of money and made them really big labs. And I think, I think we're on the right track here in Oakland County. We will be able to put the bad guys behind jail, behind bars a little bit faster by using the information gathered here in your department. That's our goal. That's great. Well, that was fantastic and great information. I'd like to thank you for uh, participating with us today uh, as we are doing not just the DNA lab, but the forensics area where they do some of the other things that are very interesting uh, as to how we solve crimes. This is one more piece of the puzzle. This is our newest piece and probably the most technical piece, but I think it's going to go a long ways to help us solve crimes in Oakland County. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, we've moved on here at the Forensics Lab, and now we're in the Firearms and Tool Marks section, and joining us today is Jennifer Geringer. Jennifer, you got a lot of neat stuff here. Let's yes, talk do. about it. Tell me what goes on here. How do you, what do you do? Absolutely. So in the Firearms and Tool Marks Unit, we uh, process all the firearms that are collected in Oakland County and some neighboring counties as well. Um, we function test all the firearms that come through the county. And then in addition, we put any of the, if it's a semi-automatic, we put the fired cartridge cases into IBIS, which is our integrated ballistics identification system. Um, IBIS is a network of systems throughout the state of Michigan and throughout the nation that you can put pictures of fired cartridge cases into and it will be matched to other fired cartridge cases so that we can possibly identify connections between firearms that are being used repeatedly or maybe solve a crime that was previously unsolved. Oh, so you take so there's a, a mark left on the casing when it uh, is in the automatic versus a a Correct. revolver, which wouldn't have that, and so as the guy shoots his automatic, the shell casings fly out, but each one has a distinctive uh, or pretty distinctive mark on it? Correct. When you fire a cartridge through a firearm, the breech mark, the breech face marks leave a distinctive mark on the cartridge, which we can use to identify it to a firearm or to other fired cartridge cases. Okay. Where we hear sometimes the stories of these, these the bad guys that got a gun, okay, yes. here it's like a gun vault here, you use the gun today and somebody else used the gun later, yes. and then finally it's recovered and you say, well yeah, it was recovered in this robbery, but hey look, it's been used in several others, so. Exactly, that's one of the things we do here a lot is they'll have fire cartridge cases from a shooting scene and they won't have a gun yet, mm -hmm. but later on down the road they'll submit the gun and one of our analysts can take them and compare them together and say this is definitely the gun that was used in this crime. Um, it's one of the biggest proponents of what we do. Um, that's, that's fantastic, you, but you got other stuff here you're doing We have too. lots of stuff here. So we also do um, footwear impressions. They can compare footwear pattern, like track marks from mm -hmm. a crime scene to a shoe if the shoe is found or pictures. Um, in addition, we do uh, tool mark identification. So if a tool mark is used in a crime, they, if they find the tool, they can compare it to the marks that were made at the crime scene. Okay. Um, we do serial number restoration. Obviously, a serial number is very important on a firearm. And if it's mm -hmm. missing, we need to identify it. So they can raise, the, if someone obliterates a serial number, they can actually raise those numbers back up mm -hmm. using chemicals or other methods so that the serial number can be used to track the weapon. Okay, um, so if you just took a file to the serial number on the weapon, correct. it's still going to be probably burnished down in further. Is that what you Yeah, do? it's pushed down so that they can raise it back up. I'll so they, we've seen a lot of methods, and a lot of the time we're still able to raise it up and okay. figure out where this gun came from. <laughs> right, nine times out of ten, it's an illegal, illegally, a person stole it probably from somebody at some point down the line. Yeah, so. usually. Okay. Um, we also do distance determination and proximity. So. Let's say you're, there was a crime scene and someone was shot. Mm -hmm. uh, the analyst can determine how far away the person was standing when they were shot. So they can say, okay, if the suspect says, no, I, we were fighting over the gun and I was actually this far away, well, we right. can look at the patterns and say, no, that's not true. You were this far away. So mm -hmm. that's a really another cool thing that we do here, which is really helpful to corroborate stories. Right. And figure out what happened at this scene. So. Yeah, like a guy could say, well, he was coming at me and I shot and then there's no gunpowder or anything. I don't know, he was Correct. over 20 feet away. Excuse me, uh, that's not really yeah. uh, self-defense. Self -defense. <laughs> right, True. and you get some crazy ones in here. So this is mainly the firearms and the tool marks. You're looking for a tool mark, you're looking to see what a gun does and all that stuff. Correct. Okay. Um, we, any firearms that we get, we have to prove that it functioned. So we mm -hmm. function test it into our recovery tank, which right. is a giant tank filled with water and it collects the bullets and if it's a semi-automatic, the fired cartridge cases shoot out and we collect those and put them into IBIS. And if it's a revolver, we just collect it and save it mm -hmm. for identification in the future. We do not put revolvers or shotguns into IBIS. We just put semi-automatics. So. Right, the, the handguns, which is mainly your number one Correct. weapon that you get in here anyway. Yeah, I mean, people do use revolvers in crimes, don't get me wrong, but when you're at a crime scene, the perpetrator doesn't usually dump out the cartridges at a crime no. scene, so there's nothing to match it to. Right. So we do not put those into well, IBIS. Jennifer, we'd like to thank you for giving us all this time here today and telling us about this fantastic facility, and uh, thank you so much. Absolutely, no problem. Thanks Great. for visiting.
The crime lab houses five departments, crime scene processing, DNA, drug chemistry, firearms, the latent print unit, and toxicology. One of the things mentioned with Dorothy Catallo from the crime lab is the word CODIS. Many times you hear this phrase in TV shows like CSI when they say they ran the DNA through CODIS. And everybody wonders, who's in CODIS? Did you know all the DNA in CODIS is only from convicted felons? Even though DNA is collected when a person is arrested, that DNA has not entered into the system until or unless they are convicted. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we will be talking with Lori Van Pelt, the Director of Management and Budget for Oakland County. Don't go away. <laughs> 